This is the PortaPal V3 ammeter. And here are a couple things that you can do. Uh, first of all, I want to plug this in so you can see how it works. This is going to go to our power supply, and then we're going to have two outputs. We've got a USB here. This is labeled USB 1. This is USB 2. If you flip it over, you can see an explanation of what these do. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to be using the bottom connector here. So let's bring the power supply over and plug this in. And you'll see that the LCD lights up on the front. Now, what this is going to show us is the amount of voltage that is being supplied by whatever we have the USB plugged into. So typically, with phones or tablets, this is going to be at around 5 volts. Uh, you'll see this one's a little bit higher, and I'll get into that in a second. But even if you're not repairing phones, this is a handy little thing to have around the house for a number of reasons, one of them being that cables and power supplies tend to get mixed up. And then of course, when you have a problem with your device, this can help you to diagnose or at least narrow down where the problem is coming from. So the voltage is going to be the amount of power that can potentially be supplied by whatever it is that you're connected to. And down below that, you will have amperage. And what amperage is going to measure is the amount of current that is actually flowing from your power supply through this little device to measure and then ultimately to whatever you have it connected to. So uh, when you have an ammeter, ideally you would want to have zero resistance so that it wouldn't affect any of the current, current that's flowing through there. Obviously there will be a certain amount of resistance here, uh, but that is going to be minimal. And also with this version, they have included a micro USB port. So if you wanted to plug this in so that you could provide power to the LCD separately without drawing from what you're plugged into, you can also do that. I didn't see a big difference in measurement there, so I'm not going to bother with that now, but it is an option. So uh, one reason that you might use something like this is if you have a device that you're not sure is charging. So I've got an iPad mini that has been sitting around for a while. The battery may be completely drained. I'm not really 100% sure, but I do know this. When you have an Apple device that has drained the battery down all the way to zero, it can take a good 15, 20 minutes to get any signs of life, assuming that there's something wrong with the display. And we're pretty certain that there's a problem with this iPad because it's labeled backlight with a question mark, but it could easily be a device that a customer brought in and just can't get it to do anything, doesn't know if it's working. Uh, there could be a problem with their charging process at home, who knows. But before we start pulling things apart and looking on the inside, we want to find out what we're dealing with. So what's nice about this is that you can grab your lightning cable. Let me get one of those real quick. And we'll plug the cable in here to the bottom of the ammeter, connect the other part to the lightning uh, connector here on the iPad mini. And then you will see right away that this is currently drawing 0.71 amps from our power supply. So we know that this is in fact charging, although we don't see anything on the front of the screen here. So we know that at least there is some sign of life. Now, obviously if the battery was charged, you could connect this to a computer and see if it shows up as a device being connected. But if you don't have a lot of time to do that, this is a much faster way to make that happen. You can also determine whether or not your power supply is providing sufficient amperage for the device that you're charging. So all power supplies are not created equal. Uh, definitely not when it comes to portable power supplies like these little battery packs. So I'm going to show you how we can kind of take a look and find out what's really going on with these different types of portable power supplies. Now, there, were some, there was some discussion about the previous model of this. It was the V2, I believe, of the port pal And one of the complaints was that the display shut off after a period of time. So it looks like this one, as long as it's charging something, stays lit up. You'll notice, though, that at 30 seconds after I disconnect a device, it will uh, power down if it's running off of a power bank. Now, if I have it plugged into an AC power supply, this may stay on indefinitely. Um, let me mention, by the way, this is not designed for long-term charging. This is to measure current that's getting to your device. They don't recommend leaving this plugged in indefinitely. Uh, apparently, they have, uh, you know, not the same type of lifespan as your charging block or your data cable. Now, you'll also notice that there is a little number down here on the far right-hand bottom corner. And let me go back to that real quick before we continue. So, this is one of the memory spaces inside of the ammeter and what this will do is track the progress of whatever it is that you happen to be charging. So you see this little 17 down here. If I grab my iPad mini again and we come over here and go ahead and plug 
the cable back into the ammeter, you'll see that this 17 is going to, at some point, increase. So now we've got 18, and it will continue just like that. Now, even if you disconnect it, that is going to be stored. You see it just hit 19, and it faded out when I unplugged it that time for some reason. But if I disconnect it completely from my power supply, plug it back in, you'll see that that 19 is still on the screen. And if we wanted to, we can cycle through the memory spaces. This is number four. If I click this, it goes over to number five, we'll go to number six, and you can connect nine different devices, disconnect them, and cycle through until you get the right one, plug it back in, and it will start keeping track of whichever one that you're going to be wanting to watch. So that's kind of convenient, I guess, if you want to switch between devices at some point. I don't uh, do that too often. Well, usually I get the result that I'm looking for as soon as I plug it in. But I have also used this for uh, some other interesting experiments. So one of them being, if you have a Samsung device, you know that most of them are now equipped with a smart or uh, rapid charge, but that is only going to work if you have the right charging block and the right data cable. So this is an adaptive fast charging OEM Samsung charging block and it will fast charge this phone, as I'll show you in just a moment. What's interesting is I'm not sure where this came from. If it's a real OEM Samsung charging block or not, you can see they look a little different. This one's dull. And the thing that struck me is that on the OEM block, what we have, let's see if we can get this to focus. It looks like we have the potential for nine volts at 1.67 amps or 5 volts at 2 amps. Now if you look at this other one, which is obviously not an adaptive smart charger, and it will tell you that we have 5.3 volts at 2 amps, which is not true in my experience, and I'll show you why in just a second. So let's take this one, which claims that it has a five, a 2 amps at 5 volts. We plug it in, come over here and connect this to the phone. I will need a cable. And you'll see that we're only getting, oh, let's refocus there. Okay, so now we're getting 0.58 amps at about 5.13 volts. Now, if I switch this over to this, which is I know, which I know is a legitimate Samsung adaptive fast charging block, and we plug this in, move it over here, and now you can see that we will have 1.16 amps so that's a huge difference my phone is going to charge almost twice as fast using this charging block as it would with this one and this has been my experience as i as i try out different charging blocks i get a different rate of charge from uh, different types and the really strange thing is that i i can take something random like this nokia charging block plug this in and you'll see that we're getting 0.97 amps and oddly enough, I'm actually using a Nokia data cable also, which is one of my best cables, even though it's starting to fray here at the edges. Uh, because if you get a different type of cable, you may experience different results. And this is the important part here, because most people assume that all data cables are created equally, and that is not the case. So I've got one here, not even sure what it came from. It's a very short cable. But if I plug this in and connect it to my phone, using the same block that just get put out uh, 0.97 amps a second ago, you'll see that now I'm getting 0.27-ish. So this is like a third of the amount of amps that I was getting from the last cable that I used, and that's with the same charging block. So the combination of these two things can make a huge difference as far as how fast your device is going to actually be charging. So I'm going to go back to my good cable. Actually, let's try this one. I have a, a yet another cable. I've got so many Android cables and I lost my original a long time ago. And you can see that this particular cable is giving us 0.77. So again, the cable and the charging block that you use can make all the difference in the world. Of course, we can track here how many milliamp hours we have. So how much we've charged the phone so far. And let's take a look at uh, power banks. So this is one of the other things that I ran into that I thought was very interesting about this device. And that is when I get these power banks and I have quite a few laying around, these are some that were sent for me to test. Actually, this one was sent to test. This one was sent to test. I don't know if you saw the milk bottle charging video, but that one's kind of one of my favorites. I like the Vivant 
but this looks, I don't know, it's more clever and it's got a huge amount of uh, standby. So if we take this Vivant, I've got this plugged into my phone and let's get the good cable again. Right, so I'm going to connect this here. We'll plug this in and this one, you may have to press the button. No, it looks like it started charging. Okay, so we're charging and this is rated at one amp output. And as you can see with my good cable, I am getting 0.77 amps. If I switch over to the 2.1 output, I am now getting 0.77 amps again. So even though this is supposed to be giving me five volts at 2.1 amps, that's not happening for whatever reasons, even though I'm using the cable that would typically enable that rate of charging. So let's try this. This is the milk bottle charger. And when you plug this in to port number one, we've got 0.87. And if we plug it into port number two, we've got the same thing. So at least with this device plugged into this cable, that is going to the, be the maximum charge that we get on a Galaxy S6. Now let's try something else. Oh, I've got one more here that I wanted to test. This is the Motorola that I've had for quite a while. And the Motorola output is 0.97 amps. So out of the three power banks, this is actually going to give me the fastest charge uh, when I plug it in, into my phone. Now, what else can you use this for? Well, if you've got a phone that comes in, and this is typically going to be Apple or Samsung for the most part, what we've noticed is that when someone has a problem with their phone not powering up, it can usually be isolated to a number of different problems. One would be the obvious, the maybe their power block that they're using or their data cable is bad, but if we've tested those and we know that they work, then we know that there's something else going on. And more than likely, it's going to either be the port that the, bat the charger connects to, the logic board inside the phone, or the battery itself and any of the above. So one way that you may be able to save some time rather than popping the phone open, plugging in a new battery or plugging in a new charge port is to connect the ammeter and see what happens. So for the most part, and with rare exceptions, it's unlikely that a charging port on a, or a lightning port, I should say, on an Apple device is going to be damaged. If you, if it is, you'll usually be able to see by looking inside. If you take a really close look inside the port, you may see lint or liquid damage or physically damaged prongs on the inside. And if you do, then you have a pretty good idea that the port has a problem. And for the most part, uh, and the exception to that, of course, would be the old school connectors because these old uh, wider types that they used on the iPhone 4 and everything before that, they were highly susceptible to liquid damage. So it's easy for water to get inside here and cause damage on the inside of the charge port. So it's a little more difficult to tell with those. But for all the modern phones, you can usually take a look on the inside and get a good idea as to whether or not that port looks healthy. And the same thing is true with Androids. I've got my Android um, right here. So usually if you take a look down inside the port, you'll be able to see if it's dirty or if it's been physically damaged. And for the most part, it's very uncommon for the port to be damaged externally or internally, I'm sorry, because in the past we used to have problems with the little connectors on the inside here becoming damaged because people would bend their charging uh, charger all over the place. So this is what the inside of the Galaxy S6 looks like. And what typically happens is people start putting stress on the charging port moving this thing around and on the old Galaxy 4s and before that they would break the little pins on the inside that connect and provide a charge to the phone. Now with the Galaxy S6, S7, actually starting with the Galaxy S5, which I can't really show you because they blocked it off here. They've got a big metal piece that goes in front of it, but the same thing is true. They have installed uh, or they have added some type of weird uh, substance. I'm not sure what it is. It's almost like a glue. Let's see if we can get a better, better focus here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but where those little metal pins are located, there's a very heavy, kind of like an epoxy substance. And when we go to remove these, you have to break that off before you can desolder them from the port. And what that does is it reinforces these pins and it makes it very unlikely that they're going to get damaged on the inside. So if you don't see any physical damage from the outside of your Galaxy phone or on your iPhone, then it's fairly unlikely that the port is damaged. It's not 100%, but it's, there's a pretty good chance that that port is going to be healthy. So what we would do is take our ammeter, 
connect it to the phone in question, and then make sure that this thing is pulling power from whatever we have it plugged into. So I'm gonna go back here to my AC powers, or my um, power block, and what you'll see here is that we have 1.27 amps. So again, these things are all over the place, but if you wanted to find out what would be the best way to charge your phone or the most efficient way, you could get an idea by plugging this in. So as we can see, this is pulling uh, around it, a little over an amp right now. So that's pretty healthy for an iPhone 6. But if you're not seeing that, or if you're getting a number that's, uh, you know, obviously if you get a zero, there's a problem. And if we know that this charger works and we know that this cable works and we know that our ammeter is still functioning properly, if you're getting no power going into the phone and we suspect that the, uh, the charge port is in good condition, then most likely we've either got an issue with the battery or we have an issue with the logic board itself. And in the case of the iPhone, that could easily be the TriStar chip, which has been known to fail over time, especially when people are using aftermarket chargers. So before you go and pull the battery or even, even open the phone to plug in another charging port, you wanna test and make sure that you see what is getting pulled from the phone. Now you see this is kind of jumping around a bit there. So my phone probably uh, has some issues because I have definitely used some aftermarket chargers on here before. And uh, for the most part, I try to avoid the cheap ones, but those are the ones that can really do damage to that component on the logic board. So what I want to do now is take this phone, which is another one that's been sitting around for a long time. This is a modification I did a while back on an iPhone 5, change out the housing. And I wanna see if this thing is healthy because it's been sitting in my drawer for years. No idea what shape the battery's in or anything else like that. So let's go ahead and connect this. And then you will see shortly, or I hope that you'll see, there's a battery icon there. So we know that it's charging, but we can also see that it is currently pulling 0.14 amps. So that is a very slow rate of charge for this phone. And I'm not sure why it's doing that. There could be a problem. Uh, maybe it's because it's been sitting so Oh, there and you see it jumped up. So this is seriously the first time I've tried to charge this phone. I wanted to see what would happen. And you see what happens is it took the battery a second to probably get some residual energy inside there. And then it went up to what's closer to a normal charge rate. So we should be very close to one amp. And if you're much... Uh, below that, at least with the healthy battery, then you've probably got a problem. But it does look like this phone is charging at the moment. And I don't need to believe it plugged into the ammeter. I just wanted to make sure that it was charging and it is. We've got five, roughly five volts, roughly one amp. So everything looks good here. So what we can do is use this to test our charging source and see how much voltage is being supplied. If we see the right amount of voltage, then we can go ahead and proceed to check the rate of current or amps, uh, otherwise known as amperes, being supplied to the phone. And this will tell us if amps are being drawn and if so, at what rate. It can also obviously keep track of how many are supplied to numer numerous devices using the memory down here. And uh, one question I get a lot is that, can I charge my tablet with my phone charger and can I charge my phone with my tablet charger? And the short answer is yes, for the most part, as long as you have a legitimate charger. So uh, a long time ago, we used to have trouble with phone chargers because there was not really the type of USB standard that they developed, I want to say back in about 2007. So for the most part, USB devices are fairly safe. You'd have to have several things go wrong in order to have a problem, uh, with rare exception. But uh, for the most part, even if you've got some sort of knockoff charger, your phone should have components on the inside that protect it from drawing too much amperage. Now, like I said, there may be some exceptions to that rule, and that big exception is going to be using a really cheap charging system, one that you would buy for a lot less than you would expect to pay for something legitimate, that can lead to some problems because some of these don't have the protection built in to prevent the phone from drawing more amperage than it should. And that's generally when you run into problems. So there should be a mechanism inside of here that says, no, you're not allowed to have this much amperage, that's too much. But if your phone go ahead, it goes uh, wacky or malfunctions and requests more amperage than it is rated to handle, and this thing doesn't have any protection to prevent that from happening, then you have other problems to that will develop. And in the case of the iPhone, that is a pretty common one when people use very cheap chargers because they damage that TriStar chip that's on the logic board. And then you're looking at a much more expensive investment to repair that rather than just buying a good MFI cable from Apple or from anywhere else that provides high quality charging cables and charging blocks.